yo yo what is up guys uh, it's your boy uh, shield Coomer. and in this video today we're going to be covering a one of my favorite keys honestly which is uh, host confusion 20 so this was done on week one of season two uh, i do want to say i'm sorry about the frames they, they are uh, for some reason in oh, pulse of infusion um my my frames detect uh challenger's burden which is just the damn plus debuff that you always have as an actual debuff and then it lights my frames like this it's really stupid but i don't know how to get rid of it i tried to filter it and stuff it just doesn't work so apologies for that it's a little bit annoying but i'm just gonna have to live with it the same way i did i'm sorry uh but yeah this is one of my favorite favorite dungeons of this season so far uh it's uh, one of the longest ones as well which is a little bit unfortunate but it is a fun one uh, there's not really any particular reason on why it's my favorite i just kind of like the aesthetics of it and i just feel like it's a it's one of those dungeons that um engages in a lot of fun ways with a play with players uh there's like a lot of things to interrupt there is uh bosses are engaging but not too difficult uh, some require more healing some require coordination some require cc some require you to use your brain a little bit it's it's all there just great great dungeon in my opinion and this was one of the dungeons that i thought i'm gonna hate the most just because of how long it, it is but uh i'm glad that i was wrong it's just kind of like pretty chill dungeon one of my favorites as i said anyway i do want to say one more thing uh, i have done this with uh old four set so still season one four set in these videos i think from the next video there will be a fortified week and then uh, uh the new four set uh, videos will come to you and i also want to talk about like how that changes certain things we do and stuff plot like spoiler alert it doesn't really it just kind of makes things convenient for us it's really good the four set is huge for us it, it is insanely good uh but yeah here you can see um this is kind of like what i thought is gonna be the meta in the current uh, expansion this kind of like a magic comp where dh is actually a tank because dh is supposedly pretty good right now they of course not only do they bring the magic debuff which increases our damage and our healing uh but uh it also uh uh does a lot of damage on its own sorry i had a, i had a brain lag there um but yeah pretty much pretty much like these packs here are the most dangerous packs in this dungeon probably like one of um they're incredibly annoying these con con uh, uh what are they called containment beans bean beams are super super annoying so you really gotta be very careful with them uh and second thing is these guys also have frontal so make sure you're not standing in front of the of the mobs because you will get bleeded like that uh, uh druid just did and also on top of that there's obviously like this demoralizing shout which is incredibly annoying because it reduces everybody's damage and so on and so on so like these packs really dangerous you really gotta be on point with your cc and stuff and of course if it's uh, raging like it was this week it just makes things all the more complicated so please be careful here make sure you're healing people some people you know where i would suggest using big defensives and stuff is when somebody gets double beamed like this like this druid just did and you can see he has a bleed dot on him and a double bleed luckily uh i managed to keep him alive it was kind of okay you know off healing helps having having like broad paladin as your tank helps you know all of these things definitely help people pressing defensives being responsible with their health pots and you know all the all the usual stuff that goes on in the m plus right like that's just that's just your standard package as long as people cc properly as long as people watch out for their health it makes your job as a healer much easier and here okay so this boss it's not super difficult but you do need some level of coordination um basically the way it works is he will do his big aoe he will do his frontals Empower. And then he will debuff three people and when this debuff is expires slash gets dispelled they leave a puddle Empowered. on the floor that does damage Empowered. okay so basically be ready with your ramp for this big damage it does hit quite hard um and here i kind of messed up i wasn't really as ready as i should have been luckily i did manage to keep everybody alive 
Um, and then you see these three, like, I, I did the mass dispel. I should have probably waited for them to kind of move away a bit, but it is what it is. Um, once again, you know, AoE, that's kind of his whole rotation. This is what he does. During this, you can also pop a either Rupture or your Power Word Barrier. Both will do the job. Uh, see whatever is available to you you can also you should also track people's defensives so naturally when people do not have defenses you want to be using your big external cooldowns such as barrier such as darkness such as any sort of off healing because that's when people will be in the most most danger once again i cannot emphasize enough how important it is to track people's debuffs it is just like really really important guys uh, it's but what is the debuffs? I meant uh, um, defensives. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I meant defensives. So yeah, track people's defensives. It's important as a healer. And here I kind of left this at a bad spot. So what happens now, guys, is it's actually very interesting because uh, there's gonna be these debuffs. So you kind of have to keep healing and you have to dispel everyone uh, as much as you can. Of course, I usually wait for them to get two or three stacks before I dispel, just so I don't end up wasting them. Uh, you probably shouldn't MD in this phase for a simple reason that you're gonna need it after. And what makes this boss hard is actually his phase 2. Um, which you will see now. Um, so basically, now the circles that you leave after the debuff will be much bigger. Static surge. Also, I'm standing in a really bad spot here, by the way, because I can get frontal here. That's just like... Uh, uh, just like my my bad positioning um don't do that <laughs> and yeah, luckily with lust and stuff we really deleted his face too pretty quickly so I, I think we only had to deal with one of these and here you see we just stack and then ideally you should have a gate and we did have a gate i just didn't see it so i didn't take it i started running before he put the gate down or i'm all right just didn't see it at the moment uh, but yeah gate is great for this so if you have a warlock make sure they're putting the gate and then just gate you do have to like you don't need defenses for this by the way because right this deals damage while you're running out of it so if there's three of them then you're taking three times as much as damage so it's just very very smart to just have something there to cover yourself cover your bases and don't just die while running you know like a bozo bozo the clown you know put on the big shoes and the red nose and uh call it a day i guess but yeah just be careful um i think we're actually gonna wipe here I, 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 I think oh unless i'm remembering wrong but i think this is the key where i wipe here Th this is so this room is very dangerous the, 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 you know i've heard some outrageous takes such as just run a lol and stuff like that especially if you're playing casters I mean, if you're playing melee, the same applies because they can't damage, right? You really gotta keep, stay away from your frogs while Elemental keeping focus. other people alive. It is really hard Elemental and like, focus. for those that don't know how this Elemental room works, it's basically every time you get hit by one of these little, little froggies, you essentially take one stack of debuff. Once, you not only does it deal poison damage, that's less of a problem, but they also melee pretty hard. So you get meleeed, you also Elemental take damage from the poison, and on top of that you uh the more stacks you have the more damage you take and on top of that when you get to 10 Elemental stacks you die focus. instantly that's just like that there's no as far as i know there's no way to immune it so like you can immune your stacks off or something like that but you cannot immune the death part so i would mm. I don't know like i feel like that room can be played but you need some sort of cc you really need a lot of slows ursul vortex helps uh, it's amazing if uh, your druid is playing it having like a frost made or some sort of like slowing and like ccing knockbacks all of this will help you tremendously in this room if you decide to play it you can also go the other way around this room is faster as far as i know uh, but the other room is a little bit easier and it doesn't have this gauntlet of frogs, which is just, in my opinion, incredibly hard for pugs. Because pugs are usually not very coordinated with CCs. And people wait until they almost die and then they start slamming all the CC and they just overlap. Yeah. 
one thing you can do here i mean as a healer not much make sure you're keeping everybody up the, with the best of your abilities and obviously do as much damage as you can i mean halo is great here if you're playing divine star divine star is also good uh, just kind of like hit all of them you can also play the root talent which you know it's decent it's not as strong as it was when it was bugged obviously <laughs> obviously but uh it's still pretty decent it can buy you like a few steps to kite and stuff you can also fear unfortunately we do not have knockback anymore you could play the talent that where um the fear that da the damage that needs to be done for the fear to break is increased so you could play that for example that could like buy you buy you some more time and here you gotta watch out for these dazzles that's all you can just interrupt like this is pretty easy to interrupt here these zealots they don't really do much the real danger comes when they become raging so you can't really cc them anymore so that this is why i suggest ccing on yeah. start in the raging week and then utilizing your interrupt while they're raging because you can actually interrupt during raging i, I didn't know that from start I, it took me a little bit to learn that because I'm, i don't have an interrupt myself so it's just not something i like hyper fixate on uh but i do i did uh get told Elemental that you can focus. actually interrupt while things are raging Empower. which is really good because without that some of the packs would feel borderline impossible so cc first wait for raging then um these packs are really dangerous as well by the way this is only 20 and it's tyrannical so you don't really see the real danger of this pack and they're also uh, uh they're also got interrupted and deleted pretty well uh, that's your like classic uh, uh, warlock uh, PI plus the arcane mage burst. You know this arcane mage really did a good job. Like he blasted. Uh, you love to see it. I feel like usually mages are not really strong on average, but every now and then you meet like players like this that just absolutely destroy packs, and you're like, holy moly, the mage is actually good. Uh, but yeah. Like you can see here like these really don't do much so one important thing to keep in mind here obviously whirlwind just walk out of it and then he will do this like earthquake looking thing i don't know what it's called molten something blah 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 and it's really important actually to dispel people in case they don't have a way to get out of it themselves it's a sort of like a root right and it roots you and the way this, this mini boss works is like it will root you and then it will put the 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 um, eruption under you the fire aoe so if you don't have a way to get out of it you will die to it and you can dispel it for free so just make sure you're dispelling people you can also like grief if for some reason you don't have a dispel and stuff but you should always have a dispel every time here all right then so uh let me just see i think we might not be playing boss here uh so i wanted to get into this boss because i think this boss is very interesting but i think we actually skipped the boss first yeah, of course you can skip the boss, but I mean we did it a little bit later. I'm not entirely sure why he decided to do that. It might have to, something to do with uh, his CDs or people's CDs. Because uh, I still think we lost the Did third you? boss. So that's interesting, Empower. but... Uh, but yeah, just just interesting decision. I have, I have personally never done it like this. and it, it makes... it work, so I guess it makes sense. I'm assuming it just had something to do with Warlock CDs, right? Because Warlock's Infernal was on CD, so maybe that's why. I don't know. And these packs are kind of dangerous as well, so you gotta be careful here. This guy will do the the chill death thing, and that's just the mass dispel. That's for free if you're a priest healer. And then uh, after that, uh, he will do this breath in the frontal. That is actually really dangerous. You really have to be careful of your tank there. Because your tank will be taking a lot of damage from this Oceanic Breath. So just make sure you have some healing rolling for the tank. Always keep your atonements up. I also personally prefer to do give most of my shields to the tank. Simply because uh, the rest of the people I can mostly heal, right? It all depends on the situations. But on packs, I usually will be shielding tank most of the time. Unless I know there is like a... Uh, some sort of mechanic that's coming that is a single target that my my dps might need a shield for and then obviously this is more like a fortified trick but in case you ever need to farm your pain up back because you know with the new talents um every time you cast a shield the cooldown of your pain suppression gets reduced so every time uh, um, you cast a shield 
it reduces by I forgot how much, but it does get reduced decently well. Just I would do my best to keep casting it so you have your pain subs. Pain subs are really strong. It's such a strong cooldown, guys. Because um not only is it really good for your tank, but it can also be a defensive for you if you feel like you are in danger. It can also you save your, your DPS in a lot of situations. It's Run just like insanely rest. powerful. So yeah, farming it back is Refreshing tides. useful if you're utilizing it properly. So just something to keep in mind. And if you're playing the talent build that I'm playing, which you can Run check on my Raya page, if you look in the description, you can go down there and there will be a link to all the runs that I've done. Every time I upload a video, I'll upload a link to that specific run on my Ryo, and also you can always just go to my Raya page anyway that I also link down and check it out. Uh, this build plays Pain of Thought, which allows us to have more shields, right? So every time you cast a Renew, uh, or flash uh, flash heal you will naturally just get back a little bit of your cd on the shield which is just insanely powerful ah now i see why they wanted to go here first he wanted to clear this boss with loft and then come back for the frog okay i personally don't really see the advantage of that like we could have just cleared frog then cleared this I, I guess it lines up the lust better actually now that now that we think now that i think about it yeah because otherwise we would be clearing now and then we would delay the last yeah this makes sense oh this makes a lot of sense this gives you last on the last boss okay smart smart tank good job Empowered. that's that's Empowered. i just learned something new actually now 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 i realized that it really really makes a lot of sense okay so this boss is by far the hardest boss to heal in this dungeon um it is simple though it is very simple it is just consistent aoe rot now unfortunately as you guys know this is strength isn't really this consistent area but our strength is like burst healing in the periods of like at most like 30 seconds because that lines up with our uh, 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 shadow covenant which gives us like such an increase in healing that it it's always obviously you know good to line it up with your schism and these are our windows where we're the strongest everything in between that is a little bit of a weakness for us now as you can see, you can definitely heal it. I mean, I'm doing like cozy 140k HPS right now. Uh, that is with Lust, of course. And then I put barrier here. This is simply a barrier that it's not to prevent any spiky damage. It is just to kind of like buy me a little bit more leeway with this rot damage. Also, I would strongly suggest keeping up the flash heals on yourself as much as you can for that talent where it gives you 10% damage reduction, also popping pain and desperate prayer on cooldown on this boss. And this is just kind of like healing and making sure obviously your DPS can help you out with health pots. If you are playing in a coordinated group, you can coordinate that. You can like heal three of you while one is, you know, uh, gonna one, you let one drop and then keep up the health pot or health stone and stuff. But here we've, this felt pretty cozy. I mean, these guys, I gotta say like, they're pretty tanky. Their defensive usage has been fucking phenomenal. And also their damage is really good, which just makes this fight so fast that... Like, I started stressing here towards the end, but these guys just blasted this boss so hard that it felt pretty chill. And as you can see, I mean, finishing the fight with 134k HPS, pretty good for week one in the season. I, I gotta say, I mean, you know, tap myself on the shoulder from time to time and say that was pretty, pretty well done by me. Uh, I would say that I played that pretty good. Uh, obviously, once you have the new force set, this will be even easier because you will be having instant radiances. Not only that, but they also provide you longer atonements, which is just such a crucial aspect of the new force set, guys. It is not to be underestimated. It is only three seconds, but those three seconds can buy you two extra spells or something like that, which just lets you, like, it just buys you that time that we have downtime between the radiances. It just buys you a little bit more leeway. It is just really important. Okay this boss okay i i've seen a lot of people struggle with this boss i'll i'll try to explain like how it works and it is a difficult boss people that say it's easy boss are probably just like dpsers that are just clicking their buttons and not really doing much else right because i mean from dps perspective i mean this boss really is easy all you have to do is like kite frogs into the circle and deal damage but i'll explain like for us healers it's, it's a bit tricky because Toxic uh, uh, Effluvia will deal a lot of damage and on top of that uh, he will do this overpowering croak. These are all just AoE damage, like AoE damage dealt. And then he will summon Frogos and when he summons Frogos uh, 
the, the what you need to do with frogos is so first of all you need to keep people up through the overpowering well uh, the, the yelting whatever it's called uh, croak yeah and then when the when the froggies come you need to guide them into the gulp so the boss eats them we actually haven't handled this mechanic very well it was good enough but it wasn't perfect uh, far from it it wasn't even close to it we always had like three four frogs up and that's because we just didn't really position ourselves properly keep in mind this is still week one people just haven't really realized all the meta strats as of yet and here i drop like a, a nice little barrier just to kind of keep myself up and to kind of like uh, buy myself some time because i didn't have any radiance charges there i pop a shadow fin and then i make sure i'm spreading the the radiance to everyone um also a good moment for holy nova here that I, I didn't use but it would be if you know not looking in retrospective it's easy to say now when i'm not really focusing on keeping anyone up and here we handled gold really well i did have a lot of dot stack so that's not really perfect they're saved by goblin jump which is why i recommend if you're playing a priest healer i highly recommend going goblin we lack that mobility and at times this ability will save your life it is really good both in raid and empire also gives you haste which is really good Toxic for this Lugia. priest and shadow priest at the moment I don't quote me on that i'm not a shadow priest player but i do think that uh, right now they like we have haste and yeah as I, was, as I was saying like see this boss is pretty simple if you know what you're doing but i do want to say that this l looks easy because these guys are absolutely blasting and also because uh, i mean i'm doing like Belly almost 100k smile. hps over the span of like almost three minutes which is and once again not to kind of like toot my own pro. horn but it's not just it's not easy it does require you to kind of like layer out your cooldowns to rotate between your ruptures paints up barriers and use your radiances properly you cannot really waste any of this if you want to kill this boss successfully at least in this week one i think when people get some gear it will be much easier And I'll just speed up this part a little bit, guys. And then we begin with the gauntlet before the final boss. Um, this part is very tricky, guys. Uh, I, I don't really know, like... It, it, there's a lot of interrupts that need to be done. There's a decent amount of tank damage. And combined with, like, other affixes, as you've seen, like, I've almost died to storming there. I would suggest angling your camera and looking far far ahead because you as a healer i mean you know your eyes will mostly be locked onto the frame and every time you have fear you should also look like what you can help with fear and then just pre-positioning yourself to the correct side uh, that's all you can do really and if you do that correctly this part of the dungeon is isn't too hard i think it is uh very fair a little bit difficult but nothing too crazy and yeah, here you see the the, the 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 dragon. This dragon is kind of the danger on a fortified, on tyrannical. It's still a menacing opponent, but it is not like super scary. Uh, make sure you keep the tank up, give him like pence up or something while he's uh, tanking the oceanic bread. And obviously master spell the uh, kill. And uh, while doing all of that, you still have to Tidal interrupt the, the boiling rages and stuff. And yeah, Tidal as you can diversion. see, he's doing breath again, so I'm like watching my tank. Um, and just moving. I could have done a better job with camera here. You can see me like taking a little peek forward just to kind of like see what's happening ahead of me and uh, pre pre move, right? So it's all about the, the pre positioning and the movement here. As long as you're moving properly and if your tank. A lot depends on your tank as well on positioning the ads and stuff. I know a lot of people like the line of sight and stuff like that, but honestly, you can just move. Like, it's not that big of a deal because if we all stack and the line of sight point, then we would have died to frontal, for example, or we could have been pushed by storming, just stuff like that. So, I mean, obviously, give that space to melee as you as a range, you can just position properly and you should be fine. And then, I mean, Infuser is probably like the hardest enemy in this whole uh quote-unquote gauntlet in this hole maybe that's why is that why this dungeon is called holes is it because of this but in this whole hole 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 <laughs> um uh, starting to sound like santa ho 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 but um yeah it's just like in indoid 
does a shit ton of damage and it will slap you really hard so make sure you're using something for that uh, i would recommend rapturing or even on fortified weak even barriering there uh, obviously aqueous barrier can just simply be interrupted you can also let it go i think uh, mages can spell steal it or something i don't, don't quote me on that um just simply deal damage deal with the little droplings and dodge waves it is it is a bit stressful and it is a little bit difficult but uh, nothing too crazy and then guys we're gonna head into the last boss last boss is luckily probably the easiest boss of this dungeon um simply because of how it's tuned at the moment i can see it being a bigger problem on higher keys as he starts to deal more and more damage um he has a couple of abilities so first of all he will summon those water droplets and they will fall from the sky obviously you have to dodge that and then they will be like these water swirls that you have to stay out of Empower. and then what i also do here is i will be uh, uh rapturing everyone because of the tempest fury tempest fury is like a big aoe hit that hits everyone so you really gotta be ready there to top people up as soon as possible and then this squall buffet is your tank slam it deals, deals quite a bit of damage so uh, or is it the focus okay so he has that and then he'll like laser beam the tank so you also have to like pay attention to the tank Give tank some healing, maybe even a pain sub if needed. And then another AoE hit, as you can see, and then he will submerge. So that's kind of like how it goes. Pretty chill. Like you pop Rapture and... Uh, and... Uh, to protect people from the Tempest Fury AoE, and then the rest of the do damage can be dodged. You just keep tank up and do them. So not too stressful of a fight for from healer POV. Um, oh no, I remember I choked here. I think I, I think I'm gonna die embarrassingly in this corridor. It's fine. It happens to the best of us, I guess. But yeah, basically here you just have to focus, and once again, just pre-moving and running ahead of the time will buy you some will buy you some time if you're just watching where they're gonna spawn instead of where they are currently. Just pre-moving, and here you can do like it depends what your comp is, but sometimes you can do two or three of these at the same time. I personally like two by two the most. I think two is enough, like two are easily interruptible. Three might get a little okay. bit too stressful for some comp, but if you have rogue, like rogue can pretty much like solo CC all of this. As long, and obviously you don't want people to, to use their DPS cooldowns for these guys, so they will die a little bit slower. And uh, yeah, this is a great lust, for example, right after you finish killing all of these. They just pop lust and then you blast the boss. And again, he will open up with a Tempest Fury, so I just pop my... Uh, I will just pop my uh, Rapture plus Shadowfin. Uh, Shadowfin was more for damage because we, you know, the main goal of this last at this point is to kill him before he submerges again. So that was kind of our, our goal here. I'm assuming that why. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, they wanted to line up with all the cooldowns of people and stuff. And usually at that point, they will have cooldowns. Um, unless they pop that star. And it all again depends if they're like two minutes or three minutes plus, but yeah, usually they will. And there I almost almost died to that. I was I was about to greed, but the bubbles hooked me enough. And you can see like we still lacked I think damage. We still didn't make it before submersion. So you know, maybe with a little bit of damage from everyone we could have done it. I mean my damage was pretty okay here. I have DPS tank, for example, because tank I don't know. Why actually are DPS tank? That's pretty interesting. But yeah, here I, I just I, I just did my angle wrong here and then Warlock will res me. And I will actually die again. I remember this. I'll I'll die again because I was I, I, I at that point I felt like when I died I fell behind. So I just kinda like rushed my way through. And we got also really unlucky spawn RNG here. And and like I just go, see I got like I, there was no way for me to make it through that. That was just really, really, really cursed. No excuses though, I mean, shouldn't die on that. But, yeah. And Warlock was nice enough to res me. Uh, but in case you don't know, like, you actually do get ported when the fight resumes. Uh, when the boss re emerges, you will get ported to the middle. So even if you die somewhere far away, and perhaps like on your side you didn't have a combat reser, you can still like, get res. You will be ported to the boss. But of course, you will be a little bit behind and stuff. So, you know, it's still worth it if you get combat res on the halls. 
we had like all the combat rest to spare so it didn't really matter and yeah pretty much like that's the boss guys so after this i'm again gonna rupture because he always opens up with tempestarius his first ability after he re-emerges as far as i'm aware and see i can i'm rupturing Empower. again this is a good place to pop your desperate prayer and fade any defensives barrier even and stuff and yeah that's it Tempest guys i just want to say like thank you for the support on the channel thank you for watching my videos if you like them uh make sure you actually like subscribe leave a comment tell me what you think if you got any questions feel free to ask i'm always open to help you out guys and to answer any questions that you might have uh, i'm also open to feedback and criticism if you see something you don't particularly like uh let me know and thank you so much for watching i hope you guys have uh the very best of the weekends and best of days and uh, good luck in your keys much love guys see you around